tiny. So thank you all for being here. I'm Alicia, and we're going to be talking about unleashing the potential across teams with the power of infrastructure as code. So I work at Pulumi. This is not really a Pulumi pitch. It's more de so designed to get you to think about, hey, how do we do this per, per X persona? How do we get to work together? Those great types of things. And in the processes of all that, we're probably going to do a demo. Um, hopefully the demo guard is on my side. If it crashes, we'll still go through it anyway. All right, so modern infrastructure challenges. So I have bob wire here because that's what it feels like today. Today it feels like I have a I have a set of services, they need to be here to optimize this, I have security telling me that, I have my PM telling me this, here's our budget. And so what it feels like sometimes is that we are interconnected some type of way, we may poke each other, we may stab each other, who knows? Um, but there's complexity there and there's growing demands and so the more complex you are, then the more it, it is to uh, mess up if you're manually doing a thing, right? And so the other part about this is that we want to be agnostic in a way. We want to be able to learn really quickly. Just imagine being a developer, being a software engineer, and you have, you have a expertise, and now you have to learn this other thing, and you spend six months on it, and someone said, well, we didn't hit our numbers this month, uh, we're not buying this, we need to go here, and that's when the poop hits the fan. And so a lot of times we want to be agnostic so we can lift and shift as fast as possible, although lifting and shifting sometimes is an interesting concept. Um, and then we want to balance our agility with our stability. So we want to constantly, constantly spin out features as fast as we possibly can. Uh, we, we want to test, we want to experiment. We want to get this out in front of our customers as fast as possible to theorize, okay, this is what they needed. We iterate over that thing and we keep going and we keep going and we keep going. And as we do that along the way, we want to be secure about what we're doing. We don't want to be in a situation where, all right, we have to onboard these customers. We have a platform, a SaaS platform. We have to onboard the customers and it takes us 10 days to do so and sales just gave us 20 more new customers, and so now we have to scale this infrastructure. What does that look like? Well, some guy patched some Terraform thing, some guy decided, let's do Amazon CDK, some guy decided, let's do, let's do Bash for some odd reason, and now we have a plethora of things that we don't know what to do because we're about to move to Azure kind of thing. And so as we move, as we scale, we really want to tighten down the graphs of uh, maintaining stability there. So what is infrastructure as code? I'll make a loose assumption that everybody knows what it is. And if not, I will tell you. So it's about managing your inf infrastructure using code. It's about um, aligning your best practices in a repeatable fashion. It's about um, speed and agility. It's about getting, I don't know if I can curse here, I curse a lot. I'm just gonna say get stuff done kind of thing. And why should you care? So if you're not a platform engineer, if you're not a SRE, why should you care? Um, the simple part about why should you care would be because it's our product. So our product means if I, if I worked at Chase Bank, then all of the people on the team, Chase Bank, it's our product. Um, how you stand up this infrastructure, how crappy it is or how great it is really impacts my job. And quite frankly, if I have to come to you to say, hey, I need a dev environment or hey, we need to stand up these environments and we can't do this in a timely fashion, then it poses problems and bottlenecks. So I have a few more slides and then we're going to get off into an example, but there's a lot of transformative impact. So you get to streamline these processes like I've I've been beating up down. And so now I know exactly what's happening. So when I go to 
let's just say I go to a dev environment. When I go to this dev environment, I know that we're on AWS. I know that I am approved for these things. Or on the flip side of things, I don't give a rat what's happening. I know that my platform engineer or my SWE is going to give me this template and this template is gonna allow me to do my job and so I can focus on the things I need to focus on. And so because of that, now you streamline, you're on the same page, you can get features out. Um, you can now be scalable and have repeatable environments. So we know what these environments look like. We know when they fail, we, we know exactly what happened. We can be proactive about it. Depending on what I, uh, IAC tool you're using, now you can say, okay, Terraform doesn't have this, Pulumi doesn't have that. Let's put in a request or let's work on this together. You have the way to facilitate and have those repeatable environments, but also you can leverage things on your own. And because of that, now you can accelerate these delivery cycles. And so my favorite thing, um, cross-functional teamwork. So previous to working at Pulumi, I worked at um, honeycomb and a lot of times I was working with teams who had no idea of what I was doing per se but they just know they just knew that these were our security best practices and what we needed and so we were able to get into a PR together to say hey I don't I don't really care about what certain things should be but you do Let's be proactive about it. And then let's build a repeatable process. And so now we can talk about what's happening, what's going on, let's push it out, let's experiment, all these great things. And then you get to increase focus on high value activities. I don't know how many people in here have SLOs or anything like that, but most times with an SLO, you have a budget. And that budget is, if the stuff doesn't break, I have enough time now to focus on pushing out high value content or high value products. And so if you standardize a thing that you already know what, what it's gonna be, so you know what your infrastructure is gonna be, and then quite frankly, if someone changes that infrastructure on you and you have different initiatives, you can pivot in a way. And because of that, now you get to focus on a high level of, okay, let's go ahead and push out these things, push out these things, and you feel confident about it. Um, in a previous life, I work for, uh, I'm in the US and I work for the government, and some of the things that we were pushing out, I was not certain that it was gonna work the next day. Um, but if we had infrastructure as code at that given time, then I would have been more certain about, okay, I know this work, no one changed this, let's keep going, kind of thing. So, um, I'm gonna kind of zoom through these slides a little bit. So what is it about simplifying that setup? As I mentioned before, um, as a developer, I just need to know what I'm supposed to be using. And that can be as simple as, hi, you gave me a product. So you gave me a template or something like that. And I can shop for that template. I can say, hey, I want this, I want that. Put those pieces together and deliver that and see how that works, test it, and keep going. I can also test my infrastructure. So as we're scaling, I have that repeatable process. For SREs, it's enhanced reliability. So SREs are focused on making sure we stay afloat, making sure we're meeting our SLOs and our SLAs and things like that. And so now, since we've built this robust system, we, and it's repeatable, now we know what impacts it can drive. And we can closely watch changes. So if you're in a situation, oh, suddenly something went down and it's not related to the actual application, oh, well, I saw a change in the environment because um, I have it in a, in a GitHub repository, for example. And so we saw that that change reflected or shifted at that immediate time and you can roll back or you can um, examine what's going on to say, okay, we're using all of these resources, maybe we can streamline this a little bit better. Now you can be opinionated and have um, enhanced reliability. And for uh, platform engineers, that's quite frankly just streamlining operations. Depending on how you're servicing your teams, some people, like, I, like I've been saying, some people say, hey, I wanna be all in. And some people say, hey, I just wanna consume. And so now you have that flexibility to do that and you can reason about that. 
and as those initiatives change, as the next uh, VP comes in and say, hey, we're gonna be doing cloud operations 2.0, you're equipped for that. I already talked about that. I already talked about that. Oh, but I do wanna mention um, enhanced monitoring and uh, recovery procedures because that's, that's important. If I know what's going on, I know what to do. So um, if I know what's going on, I know what to do. Why is that important? Because in this spaghetti noodle sauce thing that we have going on with our systems, um, they're beautiful, they're intricate, sometimes they're delicate, and we need to know how to pinpoint what's going on and we need to be able to reason about it. It's only so much um, looking at just literally uh, a standard law can do. We need to be able to reason about, we kicked off this deployment of a thing and we have these different AWS services or these different Azure services linked together. How, how does that impact? What are the insights there? We also want to save money. So you also want to be able to say we deployed on these machines or we deploy it on this hardware and now we need to be able to dial back. Maybe you want a little bit of drift detection. Something happened and you want to be able to understand those changes. And so being able to monitor and being able to recover, someone deletes something, no sweat, you can stand that stack back up. Being able to do that and being confident about that is really important. All right, so um, I touched on this earlier, but I do want to bring in one more piece to this. Um, that quick feedback loop that you typically don't, I wouldn't say you typically don't get, but having that feedback loop to say, okay, once I started using infrastructure as code, now I can incrementally see the changes. So you can also, you can see how um, your stacks have grown. You can see how you've changed as a person. You can see how um, maybe there is an incident or two, how you've pivoted those things. And so having infrastructure as code, if you do have an incident or if you do um, have a vulnerability or something is happening or you have a new set of policies you want to implement, being able to make those quick changes really impacts your day-to-day -day life. Instead of wasting 45, 50 minutes on a thing, now you can incrementally make those adjustments. Okay, we don't like this. Okay, this looks like that. This is that. Um, that totally changes the game on working with others. All right, so I'm going to walk through a live demonstration of sorts. And through that demonstration, it's a very simple app, probably equivalent to like a Hello World app. But what I want to show is a IAC workflow. So what does it look like from the perspective of the different personas I mentioned? What does it look like to potentially do real-time updates? What does it look like when we standardize those procedures? We identify, okay, this is important to us or we don't want them to tear the house down and so we can safeguard these things. And for people in the room that care about this, how can we drive that, that business impact? So um, in a past life, part of what I had to do when we had a tool is to, of course, buy it and use it, but outside of buying it and using it was to align it to what the business needed to give justification on why we should keep spending money or give justification on why I should adopt something else. And so most times when you have an IAC product, the thing that you should be looking for is improved deployment times, reduced downtime, um, seamless deployments per environment, and those things really add up to everything else that I talked about. And so you want to be able to really I wouldn't say as corny as this sound change your life, but you really want to be able to be more comfortable about these environments, about um, 
collaborating at a high level on how you want to scale your environment because your underlying infrastructure is just as important as your customers. And so this is what I'm going to show. So give me just a second. Do you all like knock knock jokes? I'm terrible at it. The only thing that I'm good at actually, I can do a few bird calls, but I can't do any jokes. I was going to ask you all, do you have any knock knock jokes, but I don't have any. Oh, a bird call? Um, okay. Also, these bird calls are no particular bird. So I, I'm not going to say that I, I'm just going to make like two or three. So this derived from, um, I, I'm from the middle of nowhere, US, and so the places where you leave your door unlocked, and so to know if someone's, to know that the person who's supposed to be at the house is at the house, you make your own bird call, and so that's how we know. And if it's the wrong bird call, then things are gonna happen. But um, I have two, maybe, okay. So, yeah, that's all I got. I'm going to throw up my VS code. Oh, why is that still there? Get, get down. Let's see. Ah. I'm going to throw up my VS code, and I need you to tell me if you can see it, because it is tiny on my screen. Actually, I might have to change the whole color. Hold on. Told you, told you. I'm a fast talker. So also keep in mind, I said I don't have any Pulumi pitches, but this is in Pulumi. Um, Let's try white. All right, can you see that or do I need to make that bigger? All right. Ooh, can you see that? All right, cool. So I have, since I have a little time, I have two examples. One of them imploded on me, so you have to bear with me. Um, but I wanna talk to you about that one and I'll, I'm gonna talk to you about this one. Um, so, when you have infrastructure as code, it works a, a few different ways. Oh, shit. Move. Okay. It, it works a few different ways. Um, you can make an ethical decision. And when I say ethical decision, that's just the term I'm using. You can make an ethical decision on how you want to do the code. I like to think of infrastructure as code as code your way. So if you like modules, if you like templates, um, if you like to hard code everything, that's really your business. It's more so um, you want to get to the point where you have reusable content that you can scale. And the truth of the matter is you're going to start at a place of small increments. You may start off with, I need to hard code everything and I need to see this raw. And then from that, I may create a module, uh, something customary that allows you to reuse it, basically. So in this case, um, I have two examples. I will, it probably makes more sense to go over this one, and I'm going to show you the other one in action. 
So normally, um, if you've never used Pulumi in hindsight, I'll tell you how it works. So you say, hi Pulumi. You say Pulumi new. And you can do all sorts of things. Uh, you can use our Pulumi AI feature and say, hey, I want to create this, this, and this. And here's the language and the directory to put it in. You can also use templates. And so templates are basically uh, a way to allow you to stand up whole infrastructure um, with, if you look at it this way, minimal var variables. So let's just say as an organization, everyone needs uh, their own EKS clusters and we've decided this is what people can change and this is what people cannot change. And the things that people can change are essentially variables. And so um, if you need, uh, two replicas or something. Whatever the case is, you have that flexibility. So um, some will choose to open that wide up uh, and some will choose to minimize that, to minimize impact. That's totally uh, up to you thing and up to, uh, normally that also lies with like a security thing. So it, it starts off with, hey, I need a thing. And then from there, we're gonna have these different YAMLs we're gonna have a YAML that says, hey, this is what um, I'm naming this thing. And so I just call it sticker shop because that's a direction I was going in, it went left. Um, and we're gonna understand what the runtime is and all those good things. And then from there, you can have different values. So you can test out different values. So for different environments, because that's what that is, I'm saying, hey, for this environment, I want these values. For that environment, I want those values. It's totally up to you on how you decide to do that. And so from there, this is JS. So as you can imagine, there's an index file. And in that index file, I'm saying I have a custom component a resource, which is essentially a module. Um, this module, um, I'll show it to you after I go through this, basically says, hey, I want EKS and I want some things deployed this way. Um, I also have a Docker component for kicks and giggles. And so um, for this particular group of people, as a developer, I, I will test locally. So how we test locally is however we decide to test locally. Most times it's a thing that we do to save money so our infrastructure may lie locally. So that's where the whole Docker component thing comes from. Other times our infrastructure may just all reside where it resides and that's completely fine too. And from that, I'm saying, hey, let's get this information. I'm using JS, so we have these packages and I'm saying, hey, can you get my stack? So instead of putting in, hey, for this environment and then I have an environment vari variable, I'm using the stack so you can categorize your stack, so your environments um, as a stack, basically. And so I'm saying, hey, get the stack. So I have a div and a test stack. And based on that stack, get, if it's this, then get this information. And so from that, I'm getting this com configuration information. I'm saying, hey, um, I have a Docker file path. It looks like this. Um, I put this here just so you can see that. That's actually not what you should typically be doing there. Um, but hey, get this. I wanna be able to utilize that. Um, on hindsight, in most cases, you have a default variable in any IAC product. And then from there, you can use um, whatever you need to. So uh, we have um, ESC, and that allows you to look at your secrets. Um, there's uh, Terraform has Vault that pulls down your secrets, however you decide to get your secrets, so you don't have to literally put it in that file, you can retrieve it anyway, either way you decide to. And so um, I have some placeholders here so I can pull out these outputs, and the outputs are literally outputs. And then from there I have a conditional. So if I'm testing um, this stack, then do these things. And so I want you to look at that component and pass these variables. Um, and I want you to, or if it's uh, dev, then look at these components and pass these variables. 
is no different than what you normally do there. And so from there, I'm assigning them and I'm gonna export those out. And so what should happen is, depending on the environment, I'm going to have a URL that allows me to test out my app. And so this is probably the boring part. The better part of it is just the deployment component itself. And so in here, I'm saying, hey, let's read in these things and I, I have a constructor. And so from there, I decided, hey, I wanna create an ECR repo. So as with any other IEC product, what will happen is it'll create the thing if the thing doesn't exist. Um, and if it does exist, it'll let it be. Um, there are additional options and so uh, you can do things like, hey, make sure uh, when I destroy this, please delete this. Um, ECR repository. And then I'm gonna take that repository and say, um, once it's created, I wanna get that um, URI and I wanna use that for my image. So programmatically, I wanna be able to take the latest image without having to hard code it kind of thing. And then from there, um, this is my demo. So I'm just using a default v VPC and it's subnets. And I'm just getting that information, I'm saying, hey, um, I'll put that for me and get the default. Once you get the default, also um, get those subnets and apply it. And then from there, I'm creating a cluster and I'm gonna take all those arguments that I'm passing at the front. So you can imagine um, an infrastructure person is more than likely going to know what their, clo their cloud environment is. So if I'm in AWS, and I'm an infrastructure person, I know exactly what to do. And so I'm gonna be in here moving fast. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna say, oh, I can make this a module. I can make this a template. I can speed things up. Um, and the developer is either gonna say, ooh, I wanna do this too, or it's gonna say, okay, well, I want this to be consumable. So these arguments need to make sense for me, and I wanna be able to use those to scale from uh, my test all the way to my prod environment or whatever that looks like. And from there, um, we're just going down and we're making things our own. So coming in and uh, setting arguments for a replica, creating the template, um, putting arguments in here. I hard coded this on purpose because I don't want anyone to change it. So what I mean about I don't want anyone to change it is, is simply I'm uh, necessary and or I'm a security person and I said port 80 and that's what I said. And so this is what you have to use. And I want to have an image pull policy of always. And this is my company standard. And so by having those things within your component, you're able to um, put in all the logic in there and the things that you need will be on the outside of that makes any sense. So the only thing I need from here is to change the variables I need to change. And then from there, um, there's the app service, I'm getting all this information, um, and I'm exporting it for use. And the same thing with, with the Docker. It, I'm doing literally the same thing, just about. Except for there, I tell it, hey, it's local host, take that port, um, and spill it out to me so I can have that for my developer. Maybe the developer doesn't know how to use Docker, I don't know. Um, and they just wanna be able to hit that endpoint. And so that's what that's designed to do. And so you have your components and you say, okay, I have all of these things. Um, more than likely, uh, this is a mono repo for me. Uh, my presentation slides are even in there. But in a, in, enterprise or just in a company situation, more than likely you're gonna have your modules or your templates or whatever they are in some sort of personal registry, registry equivalency to where you can shop around for it or where someone can pull it down and have it as a requirement. You could also um, have, I don't have it in this example, but you could also have dependency packages and things like that. That's totally up to you on how you want to do it. But the idea is, I didn't, this isn't J, JS. You can do it in C Sharp. You can do it however you want to do it. 
the idea is that you have least resistance to get started. So now you don't have to learn a new language. You already know the language. You're doing the thing your way. So I'll get to the actual example. So this is no different than the last one. Um, I'm just setting up a cluster. I think in this one, yeah, in this one I take an image. So uh, at Pulumi we have a few different packages. We have native packages. We have bridge packages, which are bridge from Terraform. Um, and we have wrappers to certain things. And so I have, I'm using this AWS X, which is an overlay, um, just to basically shorthand a lot of things. It makes it easier to read for me. And from here, I'm just getting the image out of the repository to push it up to ECR that first time. Everything else is the same as I showed you before. So as an engineer, as an SRE, I have my team ready and my developer says, hey, I wanna test this thing. And I'm like, cool, okay. Um, let's just imagine they pulled this down. It was, uh, they pulled this down and they're using it. And from there, um, in their dev environment, they have certain things. So in here, I just decided to call this cheese. And let's just say they wanted to um, create a PR. And so what you can do with most IACs, you can either, there's a GitHub integration of some sort, there's a GitLab, anything you can think of type of integration. Um, with Pulumi, we have two ways to do this. You can actually use GitHub Actions if you like. We also have a GitHub app. And with that GitHub app, you can use deployments. So you can continuously deploy. So right now what I'm about to do is change something, commit a change, push it up. Once I push that change up, then we're able to um, then see, based on a PR, right in that PR, we're able to see what the change is. So let me do that. Mustard, it works. All right. All right, so from here, uh, I changed it to mustard. So let's just assume that these are the changes I can make. Um, in this example, I actually, I have some configuration here and I have some things um, hard-coded as well. What's going on here? Uh, Real life troubleshooting. Okay, hold on. Yeah, that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. It does make sense. I didn't assign it a number though. Huh. Okay, I'm just gonna put that there for the sake of not crashing my demo. So I'm just gonna git commit some random thing. Five minutes, okay. Is that a challenge? Okay. All right. So while that's doing a thing, I will show you what's going on. And show you around town, I guess. And I have five minutes, so it's gonna be a quick show you around town kind of thing. Um, I 
I know my branch isn't protected. Mind your business. All right. So I'm on a this dev branch. I don't know why I just went there. Let me go to this PR. <laughs> okay, so in here, it's a mess because I've been testing stuff, random stuff. So what ends up happening with a thing? So you get to see those changes. I've thrown a bunch of changes in here. So some of them failed, some of them passed. And what will happen since we're using um, Pulumi's deployments, you are, when you push that code up, you're basically putting it on a runner and we do all the work for you. You can tell us things like, hey, I don't want you to install dependencies. I want you to do this. I have some pre-run commands. Um, I have an AWS or I have a GCP uh, role I need to attach to this. Um, whatever you want. And you could programmatically do that. So outside of just um, what I've shown you, we have uh, automation API, we have all sorts of things for those types of things. But what will happen? Hey, PR came through. Um, if the deployment fails, then of course it'll be in red. Um, if not, it'll be in green. It goes automatically to whatever um, I decided. So on that stack in the settings, I said, hey, I want this to run on dev. And so like right here, it's showing you that it's being deployed. And if I click on it, you don't have to click on it to do the things that I'm saying, but if I click on it, you'll be able to see what's happening and the progress in that. Why is that important? That's important to know because you need to know what's going on with your environments, um, but you also get cool things out of that. And so any of your resources, um, they're here. You, get a, you can get a graph view of them, you can search, all that good stuff. Um, and if you had to just manually do a thing, you can do it over here, things like that. Um, I was trying to do something else, so no. So yeah, so as a developer, I'm pushing this. You can have multiple environments. So if it passes, then we go to prod, things like that. But I'm able to see, okay, so this is what failed or this is this was the actual change and it failed, we can go right there um, to that failure. When it says failure, you can go right there and see what it was, things like that. Um, if it passes, it's gonna be green. Um, and you can say, okay, based on what somebody changed, we're good, or wait, this is illegal, you shouldn't be changing that, no. Um, all those things are totally up to you. But uh, I have five minutes, so. That's my demo. Oh, I rhymed. Um, I do have to say some words. Oh, wait, how many minutes do I have now? Zero? Until he comes back, okay. So, um, I have one more thing. Nothing big, and I don't sell things, so it's not that either. Um, Thank you for joining. I, if you've never used IAC, I encourage you to deep dive in. Um, I told you I work for Pulumi. Our stuff is, we have open source version. So we have uh, open source self hosted. Um, you can try it out for free. We also have Pulumi Cloud, which you can try out for free. And we have enterprise versions and things like that. So please do so. If you scan this QR code, I'll tell you exactly where it takes you. Um, these bullet points here, like if you want to connect on LinkedIn, you want to get started with Pulumi, um, if you have some inkling to chat with sales for some odd reason, um, there's four different links there and you can click on whichever one you want, especially if you want to get started and jump right on in. So that's all I have. Thank you for having me.